Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to episode number 19. Now, we do have two amazing guests. We had a minor technical issue. You've always got to reconnect your account if you're LinkedIn living. Every so often, it disconnects. So we've reconnected. We're about to bring back uh, two wonderful guests today. We were on here. We were chatting. We were set up. We were good to go. Minor technical issues, but we will be back in just a second. So I've sent them through to the link, so they'll be on with us in just a moment. This is episode number 19 of Coffee with Canvas Consultancy. And if you're joining us this morning, jump on LinkedIn, jump in the comments and let me know, what are you up to this morning? What's happening on your wonderful Thursday? And today's topic, we're going to be talking about mentorship. We're going to be talking about the power of mentorship and why mentorship in the workplace specifically is a win-win. So if you caught our recording with Dre uh, recently, we talked about mentorship in general and principal mentoring. And today we're going to be talking specifically about mentorship in the workplace. So I'll be kicking off in just a minute. We've sent through the links to our wonderful guests that will be with us very, very soon. Uh, and so just sit tight. And when Niha and Anna join us, we will be into today's broadcast. So to start, if you're listening in, if you're tuning in, let us know that you're here. What's happening in the comments? Let us know what you're up to. What's on for your Thursday? What's your experience with mentoring? If you've got a mentor, I'd love to know how does that mentor, how are you matched with that mentor? Did you self-find that mentor? Where do you seek a mentor? And how has that helped you in your career in any way at all? Now, in a moment, I'll bring them in. But before we do, we've got Niha in. Let's start off, as always, with a quick little introduction. Niha and Anna, good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you both? Good, and you? We fixed it. Yay. Yay. <laughs> I'm just a little with you, but we got there, you know? Yeah, amazing. <laughs> now, thank you both for joining this morning. Uh, Niha's obviously jumped on before. We had a chat once before, but Anna, this is the first time we're actually getting to have a conversation. So it's fun to do it in a very public, strange new world forum. So thanks for coming on. You're welcome. Anytime. I appreciate it. Uh, and I'd love to start with you, if that's okay, from the experience of mentoring in the workplace. Uh, when you first started working, when you first finished and or finished your education or finished that first stage of education, got into the workplace, started really applying it, was a mentor someone in your life that you had immediately? Um, did you never have a mentor? Have you had 12 mentors? What's your experience been like? Yeah, I've had a few, not many, maybe three or four off the top of my head. My dad mm -hmm. was always my mentor since I was 18 and I came to Australia. So we would have daily catch up via email, talk about my career, what the next steps were. So I remember being at uni at Monash University, already having the CA uh, plan outline. And, you know, I mean, talking to my dad about it, obviously I would do the research, talk to him about it, get his idea, should I do that subject first or that subject second? Then I would talk to my course coordinator. So it was kind of a love relationship at first sight with her. Uh, she's now at Dick University. Her name is Dinali. So she took me on board like really quickly. But it was after a few meetings. So we kind of connected. So she was there certainly in my last year of uni. She's now a dean at uh, Dick University, as I mentioned earlier. She really encouraged me, pushed uh, for me to, to grow further in my career. I wanted mm. to go um, overseas on an abroad program and she organize or help me organize it so I actually went to Lancaster where she went and met her husband ages ago uh, then we kept that relationship a little bit so I see a mentor relationship as you know when you need someone in your career in your life that person may be there for a period of time for a long time for a period of time to give you what you need so that's one point so she was probably was there for a couple of years and then obviously got really technical from an accounting perspective. My dad was there in the background the whole time until my son was born five years ago. Then he stopped the whole thing completely. Uh, but uh, so then my next mentor was uh, Fred Proctor. So um, in a small accounting firm where I started my career, Fred was yes. about 55. He was the loveliest person ever. He took a very keen interest in me. I remember going in his four by four, to Ringwood, I had no idea where Ringwood was back then, uh, doing audits, like, uh, just doing stock takes, like inventory stock takes. Yes. So he really helped and he really helped as well with the CIA program because back then we needed to have a mentor who was heavily involved and who had to listen to our presentations. It's, it's changed now. Yes. And after that, I didn't have one for a very long time at all. I, I don't recall having one throughout my career. I, I tried to find one. But it wasn't until about 10 years ago when I went on a 
career exploration, like what am I going to do next? Next, I left the big four. Um, I remember then I worked for a CA program for a bit. That was in 2013, full time. And I yeah. met Gil. And it, it's just, I suppose, it, I needed it at the time. And she was there. She was perfect. For me, the other point, it's a two-way relationship as well. To yeah. have a mentoring relationship, you can't just expect and- to get, get, get. Yeah, and Anna, one of the things you ju- you mentioned earlier that I, I really liked and I'm interested to know a little bit more about and then hear from Nihal's experience here too is you mentioned that a mentor was there to give you what you needed at the time. And I'd love to know from a workplace when you work with lots of young professionals who are early in their career, what are some of the things that they come to you or come to other mentors and say are the things that they're struggling with or that they need? I think when um, the younger grads come in, they, they certainly have no idea how it all fits into the big picture. I yep. think it's very overwhelming to start with. Why um, is that, do you think? Uh, Why do you think it's so overwhelming? It's so new. I think they're, yeah. all not, they're not used to how things work um, in the workplace pretty much. And uh, that's why we've got an internship program and uh, we find that the first thing they want is they want to be part of the culture. And it's probably someone like Neha and um, an and analyst. We would say, okay, can you please help them? And it's just including them uh, with lunches and explaining to them how things work. So yes. I think that's one type of mentorship, mentor For relationship. Sure. Yeah, It's interesting that idea of like becoming part of the culture and what does that mean? And I love the idea of that distinction between do you belong or do you fit in? And Neha and I have talked about this at length around the idea of like Brene Brown's work and that Brene Brown says the opposite of belonging is fitting in. So I wonder from Neha, your experience of entering multiple different workplaces, how does a mentor or how does a young person with the guidance of someone with more experience, how do they move towards feeling like they truly belong somewhere, that they can be themselves, that they, that this is a place for them? Um, so when I started off, like what Anna said, I had no clue, like this was back uh, five years ago when I started working, I had no clue what I had to do. I didn't know what they were expecting of me and things like that. So I would probably wait for like a half yearly feedback session to understand, okay, where do I stand in this organization? Okay. Am I doing the right thing? And then they tell me stuff and I'm like, oh, okay. That never crossed my mind. Um, so when I started going into other work experiences, now what I do is probably ask for feedbacks informally, probably every week, or, you know, every fortnightly or every month to understand where I stand in that organization. What should I do in order to get there? So I don't have to wait probably for a half a year or a year later to understand where I belong or whether I fit in, what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong. So mm. as an experienced person, they give me perspective. They give me, they share their experiences when they were probably, when in my level of work, what they did, what went wrong for them, what went right. Super important to learn from that. Yes. Yeah, I love that idea that you can can learn from others' experience and save yourself a whole lot of time or you can just stumble through blindly and make the same mistakes. And sometimes you've got to learn from your mistakes, but there's a lot to be said from learning from the mistakes of others. Uh, Anna, I'd love to know from your experience, Niha mentioned, you know, some of the things that, that are struggles when you start off a new job. When you were first entering the workforce, do you remember any sort of struggles or challenges that you came up against? And and how did you think about getting through them? How did you move towards that place where now your career is amazing and someone could read your career on LinkedIn and go, wow, look at this, this is, I wanna be like her, you know? But I'm sure there were some bumps along the way. So how did you overcome some of those? First of all, I don't look at my career and go, wow, I'd like to be like her. But certainly, uh, yep, I, I do get that quite a bit. Um, I remember when I had my first job, I cried for the first three months every day. <laughs> wow. Uh, just because I suppose I was very sheltered growing up uh, in Mauritius and my parents did everything for me. I focused on education, education, education. Not that I minded it. I love books. I love studying. But, you know, I mean, we were not even allowed to clean the dishes or anything like that. Very sheltered, closed family unit, as a lot of us would know. Uh, so that didn't really open me for the wider world in a way. So I had yeah. to learn really fast. I had a job on campus, but it was like 22 jobs actually, uh, um, 20 hours a week. Uh, but as soon as I started working nine to five, I couldn't do it. I just was crying every day. And uh, the second week they go, are we going to see you tomorrow? And I'm like, yep. <laughs> so, so I think it was just when I, I reflected. So I think it's just very important to one, reflect on why you're feeling that way. And number two, have a couple of really close friends, family members or close friends 
you can talk to about your your you know your emotions um yeah. and then I, I did that and I did that a lot and I realized I mean I love the people they were absolutely lovely but I was also scared of not being able to meet expectations because mm. as much as I learn about all those accounting concepts at uni doing it in real life situation is completely different <laughs> you know and as they have Big said time. like the fear of asking like am I on the right track am I on the right track it's really hard to, to be that open at such an a uh, young age to be honest but you have to be yeah well what you're what you're saying is really resonating with people josh has jumped in on the comments and said g'day i nearly fell over on the tram because i wanted to write this comment and say hello uh and amanda <laughs> said i'm glad this popped up on my phone massive need for good mentorship in the surveying and engineering industry so what you're sharing is definitely resonating and niha i think i think i might have cut you off there were you about to jump in uh, no 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 okay um, so, okay i thought, I, thought I heard something never mind no, that's all good. That's all good. She's got a continuous smile on her face, so that's normal. I know, I know. <laughs> Such a pleasure to chat to and be around Neha. It's wonderful. Okay, so interesting. So one of the things that that jumps out at me there, that idea, Anna, when you were saying, you know, the first three months, like crying quite an emotional time, not sure if this is, you know, all the different changes, as you mentioned before. It's just a different environment. And I remember I had that that experience not to quite the same level of like physically being upset, but that feeling of like, am I good enough every day? And like mm-hmm. my response was like, if I just go to work multiple hours earlier than everybody else, I can like get ahead. And then I was like, this is probably not a good long term strategy. Um, but it was very much that feeling of like, oh, I don't like I don't necessarily feel like I belong, but I was hungry to learn. So there was an interesting balancing act. Um, and what I'd love to where I'd love to move to next is the idea of how mentorships are win win. Um, so there's a Melbourne-based startup that looks at a lot of mentorship called Mentor Loop. They're amazing. And they have a statistic on their website that says that effective mentoring boosts retention rates about 70%, 69% for mentors, 72% for mentees. So lots and lots of studies out there that talk about the efficacy and the benefits of mentoring. But one of the things I'm really interested in is the benefit to the mentor. So I'd love to know, Anna, from your experience, how do you think mentoring in the workplace can be really beneficial for maybe perhaps more senior staff who have moved through that initial stage of fear and worry um, and maybe they move through it maybe they don't but they've at least got over the grad hump how is mentoring good for uh, more experienced staff how does that help them yep yeah, that's very interesting so i started mentoring um three years into my career three or three and a half years into my career i always love that aspect of things i come from a family of teachers i think everyone in my family is has been will be a teacher yes. uh, for me, I probably did it initially because I, I, I felt so lucky. I had uh, two or three really good mentors around along the way and I wanted to give back to the community. I've realized with experience probably over the last three years, that's not the right reason to do it. You need mm. to do it as selfish as it sounds. You need to do it because it's a two-way relationship and you get something out of it. It needs to be the right match. Otherwise, it does not work. I have had a few experiences uh, to that effect. But basically, yes, yeah, so the, the one that I choose now, I mean, I have extremely limited time, so I need to take that into account. Um, mm-hmm. I choose the people who will give me back something. So I, if I pick Neha, for example, I think she's been there for me through really tough times. But just going back as well, when we first met, there was that instant connection. So what was supposed to be a 15-minute chat turned out to be a one-hour chat in which, more than that might be, in which she pretty much helped me resolve a lot of my work issues from an IT perspective. I had no idea <laughs> what was going on, even though I did study IT a long, a long way back. And I was not, not expecting any of that. And I was like, wow, I can actually benefit from that, actually leverage off her IT experience. She's so happy to share. But the thing is, she was trying to understand what I needed from the very first day without mm. it being her ultimate goal, if that makes sense. Yes. And then as soon as she started her internship, that was, I think, in, September, in July last year, um, um, very limited supervision. She knew what she was doing. And, and that's not necessarily a trait of, of what I'm looking for in a mentor relationship. But basically, I mean, for her, that's that. And she's a very old soul as well. So we do have those uh, very long conversations that have nothing to do with work. <laughs> Yes. Uh, but then my sister apparently is an old soul. I, I don't know if she woke up and she's here. 
So, I mean, then they start taking over and I'm kind of left behind, but that's the case, kind of funny. Uh, so we have those relationships that have, uh, that have nothing to do with work as well. So it's, um, you know, and I learn about myself and that's the, the most important thing. She's also been here for me through hard times as well. So a couple of months ago, I've had a, a miscarriage and I couldn't talk mm. to anyone, but Neha was one of the rare people I could talk to. But that's one aspect of things, what I'm getting from that relationship. I do have a second one. She just makes me laugh all the time. And she's got, she's, she's so naive and young and she's got so much positive energy and drive. And, and that's the main, you know, as much as she needs a lot of direction. So it's completely different, but you get different things from people you, you choose to mentor. Yes. Oh, I love that. <laughs> so I'd like to <laughs> echo on how I'm benefiting uh, from the mentoring. So for me, I think you reach out to someone that you can trust. I think if you don't trust that person, if you don't believe that that person is going to listen to you mm. or is going to tailor their mentoring for you, you're not going to open up. And if you don't open up, you're going to get like a 50% of advice. And with that 50%, probably you're not going to reach where you wanted to reach. And when I choose my mentors, I see how comfortable I am to open up and be my authentic self and talk about what my expectations are, what I want to do in my life and, yeah. you know, what I am seeking from you. And I will not get that if I don't trust you or believe that in you. Yes. Yeah, I think there's a risk there of, I've seen it, I've been part of it on both sides um, and in programs where it's definitely happened through no fault, no misintention. But the mental relationship, if it's not, I think if it's not authentic on both sides, if there's not a clear value proposition for both, and if both parties aren't giving pretty openly, it can be quite passive. Like, okay, we check in once a month. How are you? What are you doing? Like that, you can kind of go through the motions with mentoring, but um, to be there for someone when they go through something is, and obviously I've, I've not experienced it given I'm, I'm a guy, but like to go through something as a, as a miscarriage, to be able to share that, to be able to feel comfortable sharing that with someone who you would consider a mentee as well, um, speaks testament to the strength and the value of the relationship. Um, I wonder, Neha, when, when you've been in situations where it's obviously quite clear here that you've added so much value to the, the experience of your mentor, um, and I think that's fair to say that's probably happened multiple times. What does that feel like as a mentee to know that, you're benefiting, but also you're you're really giving and helping that other person as well. It just shows me that, you know, that person trusts me. And then, okay, mm. that person can be open with me, which says a lot about how we've built that sort of relationship because I got to know Anna through my internship, which means, so we built from there, which is probably informal coffee catch-ups or just talking to each other and then sort of building that informal so we went from formal to sort of informal relationship which takes time so you've yes. got to trust that process and you you can't rush it you can't say okay tomorrow we can just sit up and chat about this that's not going to happen i think you just have to slowly break the ice and then work from there so it it feels amazing that anna was able to trust me with this sort of information and then it felt good that, you know, we have built that kind of relationship to be able to discuss such things. Yeah, definitely. Wonderful. Curious what you're currently both thinking about in terms of mentorship. So rather than leading you down a path, um, I'd love to just know when do you think about mentorship in the workplace and as the workplace is changing into the future? I mean, do you think mentorship will, will stay the same? Do you think that there'll always be great mentorship and not so great mentorship? Do you see a space for it happening in a more digital environment, one-on-one um, -on -one groups? Where do you think it's kind of going, given that workplaces are obviously changing and people's expectations around work are constantly changing? Do you want me to start? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I, I think, uh, yeah, it depends uh, what kind of mentorship we're looking at. I know, I, I don't know if Pranav, who's uh, my team manager, is online. He said he would be. But he mentors all the interns that we've got and does an amazing job at it. And uh, pretty much the environment changed for us drastically, was it like two months ago? Those interns started, it, it was face-to-face -face, um, for one week and then everyone started working from home and, I know talking to Pranav that, that it's a very hard mentoring relationship when it moves to uh, Skype or Zoom, you know, mm. the other one as well, I forgot the name, but, uh, you know, how to, because they're still so young. Yes? 
Sorry to jump in. What's hard about it? What's the what's the challenge there with the, the online mentoring in your experience? Because I mean, those interns they have no experience of the workplace, so it depends at what level you're looking at. Um, mm-hmm. So that's why we prefer to have them face to face initially. We had to completely change our approach and look inside ourselves and say, "Hey, that's the current environment situation at the moment. How can we take that mentoring relationship one step further?" and make that, that the Skype calls and, uh, you know, other calls work and they're still working. So we said, okay, we need a, a stand-up call for his team at 9 a.m. So he does that. I, I don't join when I get bored. Sometimes I join to talk about Netflix. Uh, but basically they just uh, talk about how they're going, they, they, you know, and I know how you join those calls uh, when, you're, when you're in. Uh, they just talk about different things that's not work-related, what they're doing at home with their parents, what we're watching on Netflix and all of those things. And then it gets into the, you know, technical stuff, who's doing what. So I think then uh, I know Neha, you catch up with them quite regularly during the day just to make sure everything's okay. So there, there's a mentoring relationship as well. And you report back to Pranav to let him know how things are going, if anyone needs extra help as well. So that's a de- definitely a different way of uh, doing things and, um, you know, the mentoring relationship, considering the current environment situation. If you look mm. at people who, I suppose, have a, a, a more senior role, certainly myself, I, I suppose, with everything that's been happening, um, it's, it hasn't been as easy to get hold of, uh, you know, my current uh, counseling partner at the moment but but fair enough i mean i i am mature enough and i've got enough experience to understand hey there's a lot happening at the moment especially at that level so i've just taken a step back and said okay that's fine i'm just going to start talking to my dad again so he had to copy it from me whether he wanted to hear it or not last weekend <laughs> i'm sure he was yep. thrilled so you need to a four-year-old so you need to find ways i suppose at the senior level to make things yeah. happen because at the senior level everyone's going through crazy things many many things but you it's on you your owners to make it happen yeah Neha, i don't know if you have anything to add yeah so there's two types of mentorship which is informal and formal informal would probably be okay i'm going to set an appointment and you know with you and then we're going to have a chat about it and stuff like that the informal one is probably what i'm doing on day-to-day basis which is if someone reaches out to me i'll be like hey let's get get on a call and let's have a chat about it same with the interns we have like informal chats and then they see something that they're having a problem with probably with their uni or something at work and they say you know what I'm happy to help you with this. And then I share my experience probably when I started my internship or when I start my work or what difficulties that I faced. And I think because we are sort of in the same level, not too much of a different, they find it comfortable to, you know, open up to me and talk to me about it. So before they go to, you know, the more formal sort of um, mentorship where they know what they've reflected, what they what their current position is and where they want to be so that sort of informal chat sort of helps them realize okay that that part of reflection which is required for them to do sometimes when you are talking to probably a senior manager you you should know when they ask you questions like oh okay where do you want to you know go from here in terms of Mm. your career and when you've had that informal chat okay you know exactly what you want because you've reflected upon it yeah. So they, there's a more productive conversation moving forward. Yes. Yeah. One of the other statistics that was shared on the Mentor Loop website from that same study talked about the percentage of pe- executives specifically who credit their mentor as playing a key role in their sort of yeah. career progression, progression and direction as well. And so I'd, I'd be very curious to know, Anna, as you've seen, over the years, people come and go and change firms and leave the big four and come back to the big four and all that sort of stuff. The data was, I think, three quarters, 75% of executive credited their mentor as playing some sort of role there. So I'm curious, in, in a workplace where we don't just want to retain good staff, but surely we want to grow them and help them navigate careers that they love, where do you think the role of a mentor is in, in helping someone truly find their place longer term within an organisation? First of all, I think, uh, you know, I mean, you look, you need to look at the individual uh, and not at the firm in the first place because if someone doesn't want to stay in that environment, you can't force yeah, them. Um, I think it was a couple of nights ago I had a chat while I was making a steak um, <clears throat> to um, Robert. So Robert used to work at Deloitte um, maybe three years ago and he basically was based in Sydney and then he reached out to me one day 
I, I think he was stuck in Melbourne for after well, Frank's wedding. And then he goes, hey, um, do you want to have a coffee? And I'm like, actually, I do need a break from everything I'm doing. You know, let's go. And anyway, so we just struck a, a conversation. After that, I became his informal mentor. And uh, Robert left after maybe six, seven months after uh, starting that relationship, maybe a little bit longer. Mm-hmm. And he's now an investment broker. So we've kept in touch. <laughs> And, uh, and this is just one story. So we were just talking on the phone. I think it was on Tuesday night. Um, because we're still in touch on Viber. So we, we talk about everything, his personal life, his work life, everything. And I also share about my life as well a little bit. But it's just for me, you, you can still have a mentor relationship even if the person leaves the firm. Mm. Um, the main thing I say to everyone, look, I have not been at Deloitte my whole life. If anything, I've, I've had eight different jobs <laughs> in different organizations. I've worked for all the big four auditing standards board, different places. If someone doesn't want to be here, you can still mentor them. Um, if you have, again, you need to have that two-way relationship and something you get from it in return as well, but certainly. And uh, Robert is just one example. There are like, I don't know, at least 20, 30 people like that in that situation where we still catch up and we all work in different firms. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Nihar, as you look towards... I just, the- do you have a question? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> No, I'm just wondering. I'm wondering from that, from the other perspective as well, Nihar, as you start to think about, you know, where that career is going to go, um, have you? Is there any? Have you got any gems of wisdom from mentors? Um, have they asked you any really good questions that have got you thinking, or, um, you know, to, to, does everyone at Deloitte say, yeah, this is you should definitely stay at Deloitte? Or are people like, hey, I left, I came back, I left, I did this. Like, what does that conversation kind of look like? I left when I came back. I left when I came back. Yeah, well, that's I left and that's, when I came back actually. So. And do you do you think you'd be in this position, Anna, without that experience? Do you think you'd no, absolutely yeah. not. I've made mistakes in my career in the past, many mistakes. But at least I've made them, so I've learned from my mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> but no, we talk about, I know exactly what Neha wants to do, certainly not accounting or finance. I just told her, please stay with me as long as you can. <laughs> but we've already planned for the next six months of her career in the next 12 months. And yeah, we talk about all the. I know she's leaving soon, so. Yeah. <laughs> I hope this is public information and like this isn't like. <laughs> yes, it is. Okay, good. I was just going to say, I don't know. But this could be a disaster. This is how this actually gets launched to the world. <laughs> Ooh, we're getting too emotional here. No, no. I mean, Neha, yeah, you can I tell him, it. tell everyone about your plans if you're comfortable, but she's kept me posted. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, I met Josh two years ago now, and we've had that mentor mentee sort of relationship, uh, even mm-hmm. though we don't work together anymore. So, from Josh, I've learned that, you know, you've got to follow your passion and you'll not fail. I mean, you will fail, but you will be happy at the end of it. I mean, it's better mm-hmm. to do something that you love. Uh, in in your own small way than to do something that you dislike in in probably a big firm or whatever that is and that's something I've learned from you and that also things like oh the use of, use of positive words mm-hmm. every time I said busy I'm like no you say you're occupied I'm like okay I'm <laughs> occupied I'm not busy so things like that which right. and different perspectives I wouldn't have known otherwise so that's something I've learned from you and from Anna oh I've learned so much about failure is the stepping stone to success and she defines that so well and she has shared so many um, instances where she has said that you know failure has taught her so much and to not fear failure and I'm doing that you know if something doesn't work out I two two minutes I'm like hmm, okay that didn't go out well but I'm sure something's going to work out better for me and I'm able to have that sort of conversations with her and even in terms of career now she knows better what I need what I want and so she finds probably courses that I could do or ways to spend my spare time in order to reach there so that has been like super super helpful for me yeah. Wow. Well, I think it's helpful for everything you're saying is obviously resonating. Um, Sheila's jumping in and saying, Anna, you're far too modest as always. Amanda's saying, you ladies have mentioned it all. Uh, would love to connect with you, getting a lot of value out of this. And Pranav is also saying, I am here. So in case you're wondering, <laughs> Pranav is here. Pranav is listening in, <laughs> listening to your experience. He's funny. <laughs> He's here. Hi, Pranav. <laughs> Hi, Pranav. Uh, <laughs> now, I know that you're so generous with your time with all the mentoring that you both do but also you have a lot on your plate so i don't want to keep you too long i'd love to end with just asking you a question whether it's advice for we have lots of people listening in and who will re-watch and listen in the future who might be mentees or mentors 
do either of you have any advice, questions, principles, or thoughts, anything at all for either mentees or mentors um, as they move on in their career? Yeah, I, I do um, maybe just start off with, I know Sheil said too far, far too modest. Thank you, Sheil. We've been talking about that quite a bit, modesty and humility, right, Sheil? <laughs> so I think for me, it's uh, I, I use uh, the, the mentor program just to remind me of who I was and who I want to be. Mm. From a personality perspective, I think it's extremely important for me, especially considering my background, my family, to stay grounded. And, you know, I mean, it's for me, it's not about money. It's about the relationships that I make. And it's extremely important for me to just uh, remain humble and nice and give back as much as possible. So I, I, I think thinking of what you want from a relationship, trying to get that from the people you mentor as well, um, while giving them as much as you can, keeping in mind, hey, how hard was it for me when I started? I can't expect them to know everything at that level, at that stage. Yeah. So also, like, you know, managing your expectations. Yes. Um, yeah, those are the, the key things for me, Neha. Yeah. I second that. It's so important, um, like to me as a mentor, when I mention someone, I, I put myself in the mentee shoes. I'm reaching out to this person, which means they have seen something in me. That's why they, they could have reached out to anybody else, but now they reached out to me and by taking the time off one second. So what I would probably do is give them a tailored mentorship rather than saying you have got to do this, this, this without understanding what their current position is. It's just so important to understand where they're coming from, what are their expectations. That way you can be probably sort of a better mentor by understanding, okay, you this this is my experience. I hear you. Take two minutes off and then be like, okay, this is what you could probably do. Instead of saying, you, you, you do the same thing. Probably it's not going to work for all three of them, the same things. So, yeah, just mm. tailoring the mentorship. Tailoring. For each person is super helpful and effective. I, I love it. Tailoring it, being empathetic, it sounds like. Being very conscious of your expectations. Being honest with yourself about why you're in that relationship, what you're giving and what you're receiving. I think they're all gems. Um and it's okay to let it go after a while when the person no longer needs that relationship. That doesn't mean they're not in your life anymore, but sometimes mm. it's short term or medium mm. term. Sometimes it's long term and it's okay. It doesn't mean you don't like each other anymore. Yeah. yeah. We sometimes use the, the metaphor of it's like a rocket trying to leave Earth and get into space and that mentors are kind of the booster packs and at different stages you need different booster packs. Sometimes to get off the ground you need like 12 booster packs all simultaneously in the same direction. But as you go, some kind of fall off and some leave. And then, you know, you maybe don't leave them totally independent and orbiting without any support. The metaphor kind of falls over. But once we get into space, I'm okay for my metaphors to fail. Um, mm. But that idea of like, you need different people to get you through different stages. I think we see that in the physical world. We see that in animals and in nature, they need different things at different times during their growth. I think that idea of we're not saying a, a mentor is the savior. We're saying the mentor is there to help you with a particular problem or set of skill or mindset through a particular period. So I love that idea, Anna, that stepping away when it's time to step away is probably a, probably a sign of wisdom there in that mentor's role as well. Hmm. Really interesting. Well, thank you both for all your time today. Uh, everyone's sounding like in the comments, they've really enjoyed it. They've really valued your insights and your wisdom and your input. I really, really appreciate your time. Um, thank you. If this is something that you're thinking about, if you're listening in and you're a staff member, worth noting from one of the references that I was referring to before, the same study showed that more than 70% of Fortune 500 organizations in the States, uh, or at least in the States, ran formal mentoring programs and more than 60% of graduates out of university listed mentoring as a criterion for picking where to work. So grads are looking for mentoring. Successful companies use mentoring. We know in community groups, the peer-to-peer, -peer, bottom-up grassroots is all about getting the perspective and hearing the perspective of the user, of the customer. So the idea of really connecting with your staff, really connecting with your peers, really connecting with your interns and grads, especially during a time like COVID, when some of us do feel disconnected, I think now and always will be very relevant. So if you're interested in launching mentoring programs, um, I've seen it be hugely beneficial to myself and many others. I'd encourage you to check it out. There's amazing platforms out there, the Mentor Loops, the Vigos, Digital Solutions, uh, and some great case studies how people have launched them internally as well. So thank you for tuning in this morning, listening to how mentoring is a win-win in the workplace. Niha and Anna, thank you for your time. It's so thank generous. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Anytime. It was a pleasure.
Really appreciate it. And if you're joining us tomorrow, we'll be on for episode number 20 at the special time of 10 a.m. Kate's joining us from WA, so we're pushing it back a little bit. If you're on this morning, coffee at 10 a.m. is still totally acceptable on a Friday. We'd love to see you there uh, and have an amazing Thursday. Thanks for joining us today. Thank Bye you. All. Bye. Bye. All right, that broadcast.